Hey guys, on today's episode, we're working on this absolutely disgusting 2003 Chevy Tahoe. As you can see, the interior is completely destroyed. This is one of my customers. Uh, he transports a bunch of different dogs, affectionately called the Shaggin' Wagon. It hasn't been cleaned in a very long time. A lot of you have asked me, hey man, uh, we love you're doing the Ferraris, you're doing the Jessicas, you're doing all these crazy cars as part of your business, but can you also add in some disgusting cars as well? Here you go. The first step, of course, was trying to understand the level of dirt and type of germs in the vehicle so that I could devise an appropriate cleaning regimen. Second, I noticed most of the rugs were removed, but I regrettably didn't find out why until the customer arrived later that day. So lesson number one is asking as many questions as possible before starting the job. Now, this car was a night before drop off, so I should have called him to investigate why all the carpets, except for the trunk, were removed when I arrived in the morning, but more on this later. In my eagerness, I started with an initial vacuum to pick up the majority of the dirt and see if the white stains were in fact stains or just baking soda to absorb the unique smell. As you can see, the white was easily picked up by the vacuum, so it was most likely powder applied by the owner to try to mask the odor. Now, the smell wasn't vile or dead animal type aroma, of which I've become familiar with. It was more like wet socks or kind of like a damp basement thing. Now, if you enjoy seeing me finding dead animals, check out the Eagle Talon video where we found a host of dead and decaying carcasses and nests in a glove box, as well as a 280SL Mercedes that wasn't moved or washed in 37 years, and then surprise detailed for an 83-year-old man by his son. But be forewarned, this episode is a tearjerker and it's not just because of the smells. Next, I vacuumed around the back seats and floorboards and removed plastics where possible. The front footwells were so heavy with rocks that I removed the crevice tip and used an open hose to pick up the dirt and chunks of rust without clogging my nozzle. In the trunk, I really wanted to understand what was going on back here and why this was the only rug left in the car. So for the first attempt, I applied ammo shag to the carpet and hit it with a power drill and a medium stiff bristle brush. Although this is a popular technique, I do not always recommend it because it can cause the fibers to twist or dreadlock on newer carpets, but for ones that are completely toast like this one, it's a suitable option. In other words, think of it as a last resort, not as a monthly cleaning technique. Then I quickly shampooed to assess how I should adjust the technique going forward. It was much better, but there was room for improvement. So the next step was to heat up the fibers first to weaken the physical bond between the stain and the fibers themselves, then hit it with a power brush, then a shampoo machine, which made it look significantly better. I repeated the same steps on the right side of the carpet as well and allowed a few hours to dry before reassessing. In the meantime, I removed some of the basic plastic trim pieces and scrubbed them with ammo lather and a standard red handle scrub brush. Then I focused on the doors with lather, a scrub pad, and a microfiber towel. Next, we steam cleaned the seats to kill the germs from what looked like dog slobber and nose prints on everything. To do this type of deep cleaning, apply ammo lather on the affected area first, then immediately use the steam machine with the scrub head attachment to increase the heat and cleaning power of the lather. On the back side of the driver's seat, we found old adhesive stuck to the leather. For this type of issue, use a rapid remover gently with a scrub pad and wipe clean with a microfiber towel. Do this slowly and be sure to remove the remnants or the leftover product with lather when done to avoid leaving any strong cleaners on the surface for any longer than absolutely necessary. On a very thick and fresh adhesive stain, we applied the remover and rubbed it in by hand, then lightly scrubbed and we had little to no results. So then we repeated the same steps, but this time we applied heat via the steam machine and most of the adhesive was removed. This is sort of the same idea as paint correction. Use the least aggressive method first and slowly work your way to more and more aggressive techniques, all the while monitoring the condition of the material you're working. Learning the limits of each material, whether it be paint, plastic, leather, or fabric, is a skill acquired with experience. So make sure you take note to build your mental Rolodex with each detail. 
Now, when you see a seat that looks like this, it's cracked, there, it looks like there's a lot of dirt in here. Now people say, hey, my seat is really dirty, but every time I clean it and I put stuff on it, it gets even worse, it gets dirtier. And I say, okay, it's not getting dirtier, dirtier. you're actually cleaning it. But the nuance is when it's cracked like this, people think those cracks are dirt. It's not dirt. You've just removed, meaning getting in and out, not by cleaning it. Maybe a little bit by cleaning too, if, you, if you're too aggressive, but usually it's the in and out. See, like right here, this edge is all worn out from people getting in with their jeans and out, in and out over the years. And so what's happened is you've removed the paint that's sitting on top of the soft, supple leather. And when you remove the paint, you expose the leather. So if the seat, let's say not this one, is blue or red or whatever, and the underneath is tan, as soon as you expose that blue, meaning you've worn it away, now it looks dark and almost looks like it's dirty, but it's not dirty. You've exposed the leather underneath and it's just a contrasting color, which makes you think that it's dirty. So when you ask, you know, when you guys send me emails and things, which I appreciate, uh, it's so hard for me to articulate that this is a, a prime example. So I'm going to clean this down. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll use the steamer to kill the germs, but I know this is not going to come out. You have to go to an interior specialist, which basically they sand it down. They have to put some putty in, in these cracks here and there, um, and then they'll respray it. I mean, they'll replace the paint that you've removed or time has removed or you scrub too hard. Again, this is a good example here. Obviously not leather. This is plastic, but underneath the plastic is black. They match the color of the plastic to the rest of the car, which is tan here. But as it peels off, as you can see, it exposes the underneath and it looks dirty, so to speak. Again, a little bit of a weird example, but here is the perfect one. So when you look at these, you have to decide, hey, is this seat dirty? Which this one is dirty in terms of germs or is it just cracked and I need to get it repainted? That's something to think about as you sort of approach the detailing world, because from a detailing perspective, I'm not going to be able to detail these these cracks or this dirt away. Hopefully you guys see where I'm coming from. Afterwards, the scrubber head on the steamer was swapped out for the sniper tip to clean the disgusting handles, rear cup holders, and various tight spots the shampoo machine or my hand brushes could not reach effectively. Next was the headliner, which was absolutely destroyed. Dan and I each attacked the roof with ammo shag, a toothbrush, Meguiar's microfiber cutting pad, and a three inch machine. On larger areas, the machine can be helpful to agitate the stain while being somewhat gentle. Again, it's the same thought process as correcting the paint or even the carpet. Less damage or potential issues occur when direct drive or a rotary is substituted with a dual action movement. In this way, the twisting force on delicate materials is reduced while still effective on removing the actual blemish. In truth, in this part of the video, a lot of the stains on the headliner were not playing nice, so the challenge here is to know when to walk away. It's a balance of blind focus on stain removal versus damaging the already thin headliner that was sagging in a bunch of different places, so you gotta use your judgment here. Mine said to back off and leave it as much better, but not exactly perfect. As they say, live to fight another headliner. While the rug, headliner, and seats were drying, I wanted to address the driver's side floorboard rust. I've never seen the floorboard rust from the top going down. Usually it's from the bottom and works its way up for obvious reasons, and I wouldn't find out why it was doing that until later this evening. Nonetheless, I wanted to slow the rate of oxidation for the customer to buy him a few more miles in his work truck. First step is applying a product called Rust Mort and allowing it to sit for a few hours. This is an acidic formula that chews up and converts the existing rust into a surface ready for primer and rust proofing paint. The next day, per the body shop's advice, I wiped the area with water to remove the acid, then scuffed with a red pad, wiped with Prepsol, and vacuumed again in case I dislodged anything in the process. Then I applied some masking tape quickly and laid the first of several coats of Priomat primer before the owner reinstalled the carpets at a later date, so I thought. While that was drying, I wanted to fix the sagging headliner before the customer arrived. Okay, last step guys is the headliner. As you can see, it is sagging. What you want to do is use uh, adhesive or headliner adhesive specifically. You're going to do two to three coats. The way it works is you spray it on the headliner here and then on the cushion. You're going to wait five minutes. Afterwards, you're gonna put another light layer on both sides, wait five minutes. Once it becomes tacky, then you're gonna use a squeegee 
squeegee it up and obviously take out the finger. So take your time. Now, one of the bigger mistakes here is just to spray a bunch on and slap it up. It doesn't work that way. So make sure you read the directions. While waiting for the next coat to become tacky, the customer arrived and was thrilled about the primer on the exposed metal. It was actually the first chance I got to ask him why there was no carpet in the front and back seat area. He explained that the car was 17 years old, it had 300,000 miles, and he used it as a work truck or a hauler type van for his tools over the years, and the rugs just became destroyed. Okay, so that's fine, that made sense to me, but why was the floor rusting out from the top and not the bottom? He also explained that every four years or so, he removes all the seats and power washes the interior. Yes, you heard me correctly. He washes the interior with a hose. So with this new information I just received, I knew that it would be smart to rust proof the entire metal floor and give him another year or two, let's say, before the car turns to dust on wheels. Either way, I'd have to start that process tomorrow, but before I called it a day, I gently attached the thin fabric back up to the cushion and the sound deadening material with a hard card. Take notice of the stains on the headliner. I didn't want to attempt to clean them until it was attached and dry, because if I tried to clean it while it was sagging, it would easily rip a hole through it, which defeats the purpose, obviously. Early the next day, I unbolted the back seats and removed both sides without issue. Then I permanently removed the trunk, carpet, and cushion. You'll see why at the end of the video. Then I disassembled all the relevant plastic trim pieces and moldings, exposing years of dirt and soon-to-be oxidation under the wiring harnesses. Now the front seats were not so easy to remove because they were rusted, which is a big surprise there. So I called in my buddy Steve from SNS Auto Repair to help me heat up the bolts with his induction heater. So without using a flame and uh, causing damage, it only works on steel and won't heat up aluminum. Once heated up, they came out easily. The driver's side was even more rusted and required Steve to heat the bolts from underneath the car as well. With all the bolts now loose, Dan removed the seats exposing dirt circa 2014-ish. Afterwards, we used compressed air to dislodge the leftover junk. Now, obviously, if I had asked better questions before I started, I could have avoided the rework. I would have removed the seats as step number one and avoided a half day's labor, but lesson learned. Dan ended up sweeping the caked on dirt from 100 years ago to make life a bit easier, then prep salt and vacuumed the remaining bits of dust and dirt before our quick protective layer. Again, by no means is this a body shop level type job, but enough to slow future oxidation, which will soon send this car to its grave, especially if the interior power washing is part of its future. Anyways, we quickly taped up as much as we could to avoid overspray, and then applied our first coat of sealer. Once the first coat was dry, we added another two layers, but I'll spare you the repeat footage. We also cleaned a few areas with lather we didn't have easy access to before removing the seats. Then we removed the masking tape on each side and touched up the rear tie-down rings to complete the rust proofing, or at least the rust slow down for a little while proofing. Finally, we replaced all the freshly cleaned trim pieces and reinstalled the front and rear seats, then torqued them down and cleaned the nose printed and dog slobbered windows, which took a few tries to unsaliva the glass, and then reinstalled the last of the center console pieces to get this warrior back on the road. Well guys, that's it. The car looks better. I wouldn't call it 100% perfect, but of course the purpose with this particular detail was to remove a lot of the germs again with the dog. And I learned uh, later on that he uses this for his work. So he puts a lot of stuff in here. Now, if you're asking uh, two specific questions, I know you guys are thinking, why did I paint it this color? Well, this color was the one that came from uh, the auto parts store uh, that would kill or, or sort of neutralize the rust. And the owner seemed to like it. So that worked out good. And number two is why did I remove the rug back here? Well, the backstory is the owner took the rug out in the front because it just became so dirty over time and it was just smelling and it was gross and he didn't really use the back that much but over time it got disgusting so when we pulled it out he said hey pull it out i don't care we just throw things in here uh, again it's a dog carrier but he also uses it for work and then we found uh, on the on the concrete over there um, a ton of mold underneath so that's probably what was causing the smell and making his eyes water or whatever the the reason was for this horrible stink in here so now uh, we removed it and i think He's going to be able to use the car for a little bit longer. I think it's on its last leg, but we extended it for at least another year. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was thoroughly disgusting, but we had a blast. As always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.